Hello, my name is Derek Knowles, and I am a PhD student under Professor Grace Gao in the Stanford Navigation and Autonomous Vehicles Lab. Today, I will be presenting about a Python library that allows users to easily parse and analyze GNSS measurements. Over the years, our lab has used a variety of GNSS libraries. Um, many of those have been presented in previous years at this very conference. Our lab, as our lab has transitioned more and more to prototyping algorithms in Python over MATLAB, we've had a desire to decrease research overhead by creating common GNSS functionality in Python. Taking inspiration from existing open source libraries, we've moved to publicly release the Python code that we use in the Stanford Nav Lab so that the global GNSS community may benefit. Python has become increasingly popular with time and is currently the most popular programming language. Since our lab could not find an existing GNSS library that met all of our design requirements, we set out to create our own. Specifically, we wanted a Python library, which was modular, meaning you could easily switch components um, in between uh, for example, positioning algorithms, and it still work. We want it to be well documented, especially in academia. This was critical for us with students coming and going. We want the, there to be clear references and citations in the source code itself so that it is clear where every algorithm is coming from. We want it to be unit tested, uh, meaning uh, tests for each subset um, each function of the library to make sure that uh, you have reliability and confidence that it works as corrected. And we want it to be easily extendable, meaning easy to add um, and implement the future state-of-the-art algorithms that we develop. Um, be able to easily integrate those into the Python library. Um, uh, additionally, we were, as we built this Python library, we we're targeting two specific types of users. So the first type of user is somebody who just wants something very quick. Um, for these users, we wanted to make sure that our Python is our Python library is modular, meaning you can interact with multiple data sources as well as multiple different types of algorithms um, and be able to is visualize all of those extremely quickly. We wanted to be able to be easily installed and to be able to uh, run simple examples, and we wanted there to be well-documented tutorials uh, to be able to quickly learn how to use the Python library. And then for more advanced GNSS users who maybe want to add their own functionality, we wanted it to be completely documented um, at the function level. We wanted to make sure that it's open source so you can view all of the code um, publicly. We wanted to make sure that it's tested. So as we um, you can the users can have confidence that what is there works and if you add new functionality what was there previously still works we wanted to be able to be able to easily add new functionality so new state-of-the-art algorithms um, can be quickly and easily added and then we wanted to be able to have baseline solutions for example the weighted least squares or extended common filters um, positioning algorithms that you could compare uh, against new algorithms that you develop. So in this presentation, I'll talk a bit about the existing functionality, um, and then I'll go through the, how you can install and some simple um, pipelines of how you can use data sources in our code. Um, and then finally, I'll talk about some of those additional features that you might need to know if you want to add new functionality or change functionality. Okay, so here uh, is a representation of the existing functionality that we already have, as well as some of what we'll be doing in the near future. So on the left side here, we have functionality to go from um, multiple different types of data sources or GNSS data sets um, to be able to quickly parse through that data. Um, and all of those different data types um, are parsed into a custom Python class that we call nav data. So this, this nav data Python class, as well as our standard nomenclature, is really the magic ingredient in our Python library that allows you to go from a wide variety of data sources into the common functionality of our Python library. 
And once you have this nav data Python class, you can make use of all of the algorithms that we already have. So weighted least squares and extended common filters, residuals, fault detection. Um, you can quickly uh, and with only a few lines of code be able to run all of these data sources uh, through these algorithms. And then finally, we have a number of tools, um, evaluation tools and visualization tools available to be able to quickly visualize um, your data available. Um, and then uh, additionally, um, and some as the backbone to get those, those previous functionalities working, we have time conversions and coordinate transforms um, finding the positions of satellites, everything that you would expect a Python GNSS library to have. Um, so to go now a bit more into the details, already we have um, we have compatibility with numerous types of data sets as well as other GNSS data sources as well as in the near future compatibility with additional types of receivers and GNSS data sets. Um, and this, again, the special ingredient is going from that wide variety of inputs. Um, all of those inputs get parsed into this custom nav data Python class. Um, and the special thing about this nav data class is that it allows you the intuition of working with labeled database, um, but the how the data structure is implemented allows you to make use of the speed of vectorized operations uh, like NumPy. So as an example of the ease of this uh, calling of working with databases of row labels, um, for example, if you were trying to get the uh, Earth Center, Earth Fix, ECF, XYZ coordinates, um, we used to have to remember exactly what rows or columns in an array that data was at, where that data was located. But now we can just quickly use the row label names um, to be able to extract that data. Um, and then again, how we implemented this in the back end is using NumPy arrays, which are much faster, allow you to have much faster operation than pandas. Um, so for a, just a single um, operation here, we're comparing pandas versus our nav data class um, of, for example, calculating a corrected pseudo range um, where we have to add a bunch of values together. Um, even just for this simple operation, our nav data class allows you to do this operation over two times faster than pandas. So once you have that, are in that Python uh, nav data class, you can then make use of all of the algorithms, um, the functionality of our Python library, including positioning algorithms like weighted least squares and extend common filters, fault detection methods, as well as soon uh, adding DGNSS and factor graft optimization. And then additionally, we have a number of evaluation tools um, and visualization tools. So down on the left, we, you can plot trajectories on maps. You can visualize rows of uh, data sources in your uh, data structure, either by uh, or break them out by constellation, as well as we have sky plotting functionality. So you can see where your uh, the satellites were located during the data time that you were collecting data. Um, okay, so now I'll talk a bit about how you can actually make use of our library, how you can install, it, and I'll walk through a couple of simple examples of code. So uh, if you're trying to install it as quickly as possible, we're live on the Python package index. So you can simply either pip install or conda install gnsslibpy to have all of our functionality at your fingertips. Um, and then if you're actually trying to change uh, code or add new code, on our documentation website, we have detailed instructions of how you install our library on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux systems. Um, additionally, we're compatible with Jupyter Notebook and Google Colab. So uh, 
showing a quick video snippet of how to install. Um, you simply add this exclamation point pip install gnsslibpy to Google Colab, and then inside of Google Colab, you can use our Python library. And so this example, I added a bunch of random numbers and then plotting it to show you that this is working in Google Colab. Um, additionally, so on our uh, documentation website, we have many interactive um, tutorials that are all Jupyter Notebooks. So we walk you through um, details about our Python nav data class, about how you can load in GNSS data sources or data sets, show you how to run our existing algorithms, our visualization code, as well as the additional utilities that we have. So now to walk through a very simple example uh, pipeline uh, and show you how our code, the ease of our code. Um, at the top here, we simply load in from GNSS libpy the functions that we want to use. Um, so, and then in this second line, we load in uh, the Android derived um, data from the Google Decimator Challenge last year. Um, we load it um, in to our nav data custom Python class. We solve weighted least squares um, on that data, and then we plot that data on a map. And so you can see um, simply just with some import statements and three lines of code, we can go from this derived, um, this GNSS data set into a map of the trajectory. Um, and then to show you the modularity, here instead of the 2021 Google data set, we use the, the newer, this year's 2022 data set. We solve weighted least squares. We use weighted least squares to calculate the residuals. And then we'll plot it by constellation. So after the residuals are calculated, it goes ahead and breaks it up into GPSL1, GPSL2, Galileo, all of those um, constellation types that are already labeled within the GNSS data. Okay, so now I'll talk a bit more about some of the additional uh, functionality that we have. Um, so our um, one of the things I'm most proud of is how well our library is documented. So on our dedicated documentation website, we have details about our package architecture, about st our standard naming conventions, um, as well as uh, function level references. So every function in our library has documented input output types as well as a description of what that function does. And you can either find that in the code source itself or in um, our auto-built function level references on the documentation website. As well as, again, we have those tutorials to walk you through how to use every function, as well as a contributing guide. So if you're excited about our library and want to contribute, we'd love your contributions to add additional functionality into our library. Um, and again, all of that documentation is available on our website at gnsslibpy.readthedocs.io. Um, and then just quickly, we are available on GitHub. So all of this code that I mentioned is open source. Um, you can look it up right now. It's available for you. Um, as well as we're unit tested. So um, we have tests across, um, we have our tests cover 94% of our code base um, and that, uh, as well as additional build tests um, across Windows and Mac and Linux to make sure that it works on every platform um, that we cover. And those tests really allow you to have, uh, we wanted to make sure that those tests exist to provide confidence to our users in the reliability of our code. So in conclusion, um, we created this Python library that is modular. 
So you can easily switch out um, what type of data source you're coming from, what algorithm you're using. Um, it's well documented. There's tutorials, um, reference documentation, all on our dedicated documentation website. Um, it's unit tested, so you can have confidence that the code works as expected. Um, and will continue to work as expected as new code is added. And then it's easily extendable. So we have documentation guides on how to extend um, our library, either adding additional data sources or adding additional algorithms. Um, I'd like to thank not only my co-authors, Ashwin and Ramya, but our entire lab, especially those who have already contributed um, have already individually contributed to the Python library. Um, and then I'll, I'll leave this page up um, to finish. Um, this is a QR code directly to our GitHub page where you can view our code source. And then additionally, um, we'd love to have your feedback or if you have requests, you can let us know either on our GitHub page with an issue or you can email uh, Professor Gao directly We'd love to know whether or not we've been helpful to you. Thank you.